Hey, welcome back. A special hour coming your way as we look back. 45 years ago, the USS Liberty was as close to being sunk as any ship can be by our wonderful ally, that extraordinary little democracy, that brave little country. Actually, it's a privately owned state owned by the Rothschild City of London banking cartel set up by them, of course, over a long period of time. Israel attacked the USS Liberty and killed dozens of, well, it, the whole story is one of, of, I think, infamy that will and should never be forgotten. Unfortunately, it is being rapidly pushed aside by the controlled Zionist press as quickly as possible over these years. We're going to spend some time this hour with primarily Larry Weaver, who is going to tell his story for the first time on this program tonight. I really look forward to hearing that. Larry, welcome to the program. Thank you very much for taking time to be here. Well, thank you for for the time of giving us time. Of not course. Many people, not many people have, but all we got to do is, you know, you say what, what has happened in the last 45 years. Just look at how Congress used to work. And I'm saying before the liberty. Congress used to get stuff done. They used to get laws passed. They were fair. Things were working. Social Security was working. We really didn't have big, big problems. And to me, and this is this my opinion, Congress is uh, take, taking money under illegal pretense because people that work in America uh, are paid for actually what they know, their education, but their job performance. Now, there's people in Congress, there's no doubt about it, that are educated. But based on job performance, I don't think you should get paid anything because all you hear is them jabbering back and forth, and I don't watch much TV at all. But whenever I turn CNN and just see that, I mean, they're yielding time to somebody else, and then half of the chamber, well, more than half, three-quarters of the chambers is empty, and they're supposed to be there representing Anyhow, that's today, but before it was different, before the liberty, right. before, before Johnson let him get away with the will to kill United States yes. uh, servicemen. And yeah. after that, they had us by you know what. Well, we can talk about things really turning with the death of uh, John Kennedy, I think. And Well, that's where, it, that's where it started. I mean, yeah. Johnson wasn't afraid to kill anybody if he, no. if he wasn't, if wasn't, wasn't afraid to get he, rid of him. He knew. He knew so the liberty was nothing. Right. Anyway, what I want to touch on here is I was on watch, 8 to 12 watch, and I was up on the bow in my last hour, and I saw a high-speed aircraft jet, three to four of them, making big uh, circles over the Liberty. And then uh, then there's a boxcar that went over, and I'm going to talk fast because it's only an, only an hour show, and even at two hours, I couldn't get it all in. Now, a boxcar uh, is uh, a C-54? I'm not exactly sure the name. Okay, but it's, I, it's all, a... All, we just all nicknamed... Everybody nicknamed it a boxcar. Yeah, car. That's it's a, twi- like a twin-engine transport. You can look it up, a boxcar. Right, car. and yeah. it, it's about... It was about half of the altitude, and maybe a little less than that, than uh, the jets were... I see. ...from, from where I was standing. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if they had any, uh, any cameras or any uh, powerful binoculars or anything that they could see the name of the ship or the... or markings, AGTR-5. Hell, they didn't but, need to know, uh, Larry, in my opinion, they knew before they even took off what they were going to look for, and it was the USS Liberty. I, I don't well, think that, well, I tell you, if you leave me finish my part, it would be self-explanatory. And uh, Please do. I'll go, I, I, will, I will gladly go before Congress, and I don't care who's president. If he says that <laughs> we had no flag flying, I'm going to call him a liar in front of the nation, because that's what he would be. Because I know better. I know what I saw that day, and that will never change. As Phil has heard me at different reunions, that don't I don't care how long you tell a lie, it never becomes the truth. And no, and no matter how long you tell the truth, as long as it is in that truth, it never becomes a lie. Now, after the boxcar, you know, if you had a real good set of binoculars, you might have, I'm saying might, have been able to see our American flag on the map. Uh-huh. But after I got relieved, I was coming back to catwalk, and this low-flying, very dark, painted gray uh, aircraft, I always nicknamed it a bucket of bolts, and my shipmates know that from reunion. Anyway, he was that close, I thought he was going to come close to one of our masts or one of our overhanging masts. And uh, I stopped, and uh, uh, the co-pilot's window was open, 
and he was smiling, and I could see how bright his teeth were. He I was that threw, close. That's amazing. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I yeah. threw up my arm, and I waved to him, and he waved back. And, uh, I mean, he was that close. I think, you know, if you had USS Liberty ball cap, I think he might have been able to read that. I mean, Unbelievable. They, now, was, yeah. this the, was this the box car, Larry? No, no, no. This was an old, oh, an old bucket of bolts, probably left over from World War II that they stole from somebody or something. Huh. But but anyhow, after, after the, this is the very most important part. And this is way this is way before the attack. I mean, not hours before, but uh, within a half an hour or so. Mm-hmm. Uh, as the plane went by, the starboard wing was facing me. You know, as he went by, and right behind the starboard wing was a very large star of David painted on the plane. Mm-hmm. That plane knew who we were. Sure. Right then and there. So naturally, they would have communications. So for any other plane or whatever, or anybody else saying, you know, 6,000 miles away, well, there's no flag flying away, I call every one of them a liar right to their face right now on the air. And if they want to stand next to me, you know, and then try to talk me down, I I dare them to. Because you don't have a chance against the truth. I don't care who you are, uh, admiral, whatever. I am not afraid anymore. At one time, they... They had me be pretty scared when they threatened me, but I am not. I'm just at the age now that I just am sick and tired of 45 years of lies and 34 of our shipmates, that, you know, that were murdered that day cannot speak up, and we've lost a lot since then. Yeah, I I, I saw that big star, David, and what I wanted to say is, what, you know, after I saw him and the plane went by, in my heart I felt a, a sort of a sigh of relief. I thought, oh, wow. I know they're an ally. They know we're here. So I, I got relaxed, you know, and then I uh, uh, was dizzy on my uh, watch uh, a little bit, and the doc wanted to look at my ears afterwards, and and I went back to uh, the sick bay, and he was looking at me and, you know, my ears and stuff, and they said, uh, stand clear of the motor wheel boat. We're going to test the engine. So all of a sudden, we heard this rat tat 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 real loud on the bulkhead. And I, I said, damn, I said, the prop just come off that motor wheel boat, a dock. And, and then he called General Quarters, and it wasn't a drill. And uh, and uh, the planes that were coming in uh, were completely unmarked. And, uh, and you know, one of the reasons Johnson called the planes back is because he didn't want to embarrass them. He called, uh, he called our planes back, ladies and gentlemen, yes. to their yes. carrier bases and let the attack continue. Yes, uh, 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 Captain Tuttle, that was uh, 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 the captain of uh, Saratoga, uh, he, he's the one, he got two, two squadrons off him. And he talked to me at one of the reunions, just him and I at the table, and he was he was just sobbing so much. He was knew I was one of the ones that was not expected to live overnight, and you know, and he was apologizing to me. And I said, "What are you apologizing for?" And he just said, "I had so much, so much power, power, and I couldn't help you guys." And uh, you that's, know, that's he, a he, very he, he, that's a very poignant me. story. Yes, that's a that's that's a I can't even imagine he. As you never get away from the liberty, that man never got away from yeah, knowing I think that he, yeah, he tried. Yeah, he passed away, but, uh, yeah. but he, yeah, he, he really, I, I, I could just put myself in his shoes and just think of, yeah, you know, running a carrier and what all the good you could do in, in defending a ship. Of course, that was helpless. And uh, how far away you know, was the Saratoga, Larry? Approximately how many minutes I'm away? Not, was I'm help? not sure. I, I, I heard uh, uh, from launching time. Uh-huh. To getting to us probably wasn't more than seventeen minutes or tw- or, or twenty seven right. minutes or something. Right. But right. the biggest thing is, is the Israeli radar on their planes would have picked them up. Yes. And they'd have cut off the attack. At, right then. At, I agree. Yeah. They yeah. Didn't knew somebody was coming. Yep. Yep. All right. So you're on the bow of the ship. Uh, it's uh, what's the weather like that day? Oh, it's just a beautiful day. I mean, it was a day for sunbathing. Mm-hmm. You know, after I saw the, you know, the Israeli plane, you know, the big plane with the markings on it, you know, I felt better. And then, you know, the, the idea that, uh, you know, seeing smoke, you know, we were in international orders, but uh, it was mm-hmm. on the horizon. You could see the smoke building up from the war and, you know, them attacking Egypt. Mm-hmm. 
So naturally, you know, we're that close, you know, you're, even though you're far enough away to, to you know, be safe, basically, in international waters, yeah. that uh, that you're glad that it was an ally that saw you. And, well, of course, uh, I understand. Now, for, for the listeners, the Liberty was a surveillance ship. It was not an armed fighting combat ship. Clearly not a threat to anyone. Just if even let's just pretend the Israelis didn't identify and didn't know the ship. They could look at the ship and tell it wasn't a combat ship. But they knew obviously. All right, so as you said, there I guess what, twenty millimeter cannon fire first? What was what was the first to well, to hit the ship? Well, uh uh w- with the knowledge of what what happened, okay. I can share this with you because of being a shorter show and try to get as much in. If you want to take a ship out, just think of it. The first thing you do is you send out uh, your jets with uh, armor-piercing uh, cannon fire and rocket, uh, that armor-piercing rocket. That puts uh, holes in the ship all over the place. And uh, there was a count of 821 holes through the metal and through, you know, into, into the living quarters and stuff like that. There were holes through it. There were a lot of uh, other marks, like grazes, like that, that didn't make it through. But there's 821 of those. So after you empty out all that, mm-hmm. then you come with uh, the jets carrying the, the gel gasoline, napalm. Well, you drop it in the holes, you burn the ship within. And then you come with the. Uh, Torpedo gunboats to to finish it off, and this is what they did. This is what and right. and and this was an accident. After uh-huh. that plane that uh-huh. I saw knew it was an American uh, yeah. ship, no, and that had to be a planned attack. No, I, no, absolutely. With Johnson giving a green light that mm-hmm. looked, you know, I'll make sure you're left alone, and he was stated to Admiral Moore in the Oval Office that he wants that ship on the bottom and every sailor killed. He did say that. That's yes, what Thomas Moore said. I, I know that. For Larry, the accuracy of the hits on the ship, how effective were the uh, Israeli pilots in dumping their deadly munitions oh, well, and they, weapons? They were, they were experts. I think they were trained by, trained by American pilots, if I remember right. But they were picking guys off. fact is, I got to my general quarter station, which is Secondary Con, which is an old helicopter pad, which never made much sense to me because it had a ship's wheel there and a compass and then I was a radio talker there and then I had uh, Fred would be the helmsman and then there was a, a first class there would be officer of the deck. So we were out in the open and we were there just in case the bridge got blown up. Well, if they got blown up, we sure wouldn't have been there. But uh, we survived one strafe and uh, I said, Fred, we got to get the heck down out of here. You know, I said, because they're going to be coming right in, and uh, the first place said you can't go anywhere without a captain order. Oh. And I said, you want to listen in on my earpiece? The confusion going up in the bridge. I said, I know our captain, and our captain will want us to do one thing, and that is survive. Damn right. So yep. Fred, yep. Fred and I jumped down this offset, and uh, the way I understand it, the next straight, the straight day after, I was told that uh, that first class was cut in half. Anyway, uh, yeah. as we got down there, and actually it was pretty hard, hard, horrid uh, feeling to being out in, in, in uh, on a ship and trapped by being on a ship, and then absolutely no kind of uh, retaliation in the defense that we didn't have anything. And uh, anyway, Fred, you know, not that I was stronger, he was weaker, anything. He, I think he just lost a little more of me because he started heading toward the rail, and I thought he was going to jump ship. Uh-huh. So I grabbed him by the collar, and I was pretty strong back then because I was working out in the weight room that Liberty had. And anyway, uh, I threw him in the corner, and then I got on top of him, and then I, I come out and see which way they were attacking. And they were t- attacking uh, between 10 and 20 degrees off the point bow, otherwise either to starboard or to port. And each time I come out, I to see which which way they were coming in. And uh, then if we were on the starboard side, and then uh, I mean, and then we had a uh, a port attack coming in. Well, I you know get a hold of Fred and move, and slide him, moving. That was our only means of defense was those 
those walls, and there wasn't much. 